Good morning. Welcome friends to Coad for Kids Facebook Live. Our topic today is on bullying and it comes in just as we have celebrated in May National Mental Health Month. I think there's a connection there between mental health and bullyingness. Today we'll cover a lot of areas about bullying, but our focus in our little title is Niceness is Priceless. My name is Melissa Shamel. I'm the Special Projects Coordinator with the Prevention Services for Coed for Kids. I have a returning guest today with me. This is Karen Gallagher. She's instructor with the, um, of active parenting courses through the Ohio State University Extension Office. I'd like to welcome Karen today. Thanks, Melissa, so much. I really appreciate coming back and, and meeting and seeing everybody out there. How you doing? Good to see you out there. I, I know school's out, but and that's where a lot of this kind of activity and behavior occurs, but I still think there's some tips that we can cover today on bullying and some defining of bullying, and even we'll get in some actual tips and examples of role playing to help a child um, that's dealing with bullying. And we'll also talk about the person bullying and the victim. Yep. All right, yep. thank you, Karen. Um, what would you sell us first about bullying? And, and excuse me if I use my notes, but this is such important information that I want to make sure I get it right. And I'm going to give you some statistics and some data as well, so you can understand why I'm so passionate about this. First and foremost, we have to remember that bullying happens in schools. It happens during that unstructured time when the kids are on the bus, the kids are on the playground, the kids are in the hallways, they're in the restrooms, out of the eyes and sight of every adult that's in that building and, and it not only occurs in our schools but it occurs in our neighborhoods too again out of the eyes out of the sight of all the adults around we know as adults it also happens in the workplace we have to remember before the internet even started it was specific to that face-to-face Kind of bullying you know and those comments that people would make or a phone call back in the day when we didn't have cell phones before or texting yes you had the phone with the cord on the wall the landlines passing notes but not anymore it's it's really grown from there it takes place not only face to face but it takes place uh through emails through texting you know social media the cyber bullying through snapchat videos through through all the things that they can do 24 hours a day now, seven days a week, sometimes in the quiet of their bedroom. And it drives me nuts. And I think they're more bold because it's behind a screen and it's not a face to face. So it's just so much more easier to send out a text or Snapchat that can be rude to a child. Absolutely. You know, having a device yep. at your beck and call 24 hours a day, seven days a week makes it so easy and later on i was going to use the, the little term that i heard before somebody else i didn't coin this phrase but it's called keyboard courage oh. so people who will send out those little snippets they have keyboard courage because it's between them and the keyboard and they don't have to interact with the person so when they want to post something negative something mean something hateful they keep hit send and it goes hmm. And kids forget once it's gone it's gone forever you know it's out it, it's out in the cyber world and you can't get it back you can't get it back some of the data that i think is really important you know some data that i just found 2014 the journal of american medical association for pediatrics and came up with a study of almost 300,000 youth between the ages of 9 and 21 and they said they were bullied 2.23 times in their school and, and thought about killing themselves mm. their the rate of suicide is so much higher 2.3 times higher in kids who are bullied than it is in kids who aren't bullied and then you think about the kids who are maybe lesbian gay bisexual transgender the LGBTQ kids, that number goes up considerably for them. They're five times more likely, five times more likely to complete suicide than their straight peers. So all, we have to, to gather every, every kid up and, and, and talk to them about what it means to be nice, what it means to watch your words. 
there's a little phrase, I, another word, I find stuff all over the place. <laughs> it's use the word wait, W-A-I-T. Mm -hmm. Why am I talking? I use it in conversation because I like to gap. But kids need to learn to wait. Why am I sending that text? Why am I posting that, that video? Why am I saying these things? Because they're cool. In 2015, there was another report that was that came out nationwide 21 percent nationwide of our students ages 12 12 to 18 experience bullying mm -hmm. and then they found out in 2017 another the root uh, the youth risk behavior study 19 percent of students in grades 9 through 12 reported bullying on school property and the and the 12 months before so that would be in 2016. so you've got oh these kids are seeing it. They're seeing it. They're experiencing it. We know that people who who are are bullied are, you know, they're victims. They experience low self-esteem and anxiety. They don't want to go to school. They don't want to leave their room sometimes. Um, they're more inclined to use alcohol and drugs. Yeah. More likely to suffer from a host of physical ail ailments such as headaches and sleep disturbances. You know. I didn't even remember my own kids not wanting to go to school. And I wondered what was going on. And then I found out, oh, there's some bullying going on. Were they the bully or were they the victim? You know, we needed to find that out. And we also know as, as bullies grow up, they have a harder time keeping jobs. They have problems too with alcohol and drugs and they're more likely to have a criminal record. We have to remember a large number of bullies are also victims of bullying themselves. So it's, it's carried on. It's, it goes on. Yes. It's what they've learned. And it's exactly right. How they can deal with it. You and know, I think in the schools, I worried a lot with the children that don't report yes. that they've been bullied. Yes. They don't want to be a tattletale. Yes. Or, well, we're going to talk about that. We, you know, yes, yep. we will get into defining what bullying is. Yep. And, you know, some people say, oh, I'm just teasing or I'm just picking on you. But it's not like that right now. It's not like that in today's world because we have feelings that are being hurt. Absolutely, absolutely. We have to remember, if we look very closely, we're going to see we have two people who are experiencing pain. We have the victim experiencing pain and also the, the, the bully experiencing pain. So we've got two people in pain that need to be helped. So that's, I like to look at the data first and, and before I even go into the definition of bullying. And I think that's true. The, you know, it's out there and I worry about, like I said, those that are unreported. Absolutely. So what kind of, um, you'll hear about um, bullying and conflict and harassment and kind of like give us maybe more of a definitive answer as to what we're looking for when we're questioning what is bullying. Absolutely. That's a great question. Melissa, you know, the American Psychological Association has that formal definition of bullying, and it is, and I'm going to read it to you, bullying is a form of aggression, aggressive behavior in which someone intentionally and repeatedly causes another person injury or discomfort. Now, if we talk to the kids, they're going to tell you that's when someone makes them feel less than what they truly are, less than who they are as a person. Uh, we know that boys are more likely, more likely than girls, to report physical, being physically bullied by their peers. And we know that girls are more likely than boys to report being target, target of rumor spreading and sexual harassment. Mm -hmm. We know girls report being bullied by boys and girls, so it's both, it's boys and school. girls. Yep. While boys report being bullied by other boys. And we know that the bullied individual usually has a troubled past and, and you know, they're, they're struggling themselves. So we need to get down to the nitty gritty as to what's bothering them. Why are they trying to make somebody else feel so bad about themselves, being so hurtful? We've talked about the types of bullying you and I have, you know, and it can take so many different forms. We've got physical bullying, teasing, name calling, social exclusion. Oh yeah. Uh, peer sexual harassment, bullying from about race, ethnicity, religion, uh, gender identity, or even sexual orientation. It, it covers a whole gamut of things. And 
they do it in so many different ways. One way before you and I uh, were growing up, and something that occurred has co occurred since you and I have been growing up, I should say, is cyberbullying. Yes. You know, that's the number one way they bully now. And that's posting and texting hurtful and harmful things. Um, I, I can't stress enough to parents, you must, you must, you must know what apps are on your kids' phones. You must, you must, you must know the passwords to all those apps and check those apps and, and tell your kids, hey, I just want you to know, you're, I'm letting you have that phone, but I have access to that phone too, and I'm gonna check it. I wanna see what you're doing online. I want to see what apps you're, you have. I wanna see what you're posting. You know, as I said, that keyboard courage, kids yes. will type something or take a picture, shoot it off right away. Uh, Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, WhatsApp, Kick. Those are just a few of the apps that we have to be mindful of. Um, these posts are stored online and seen by a wider audience. And that is probably why it's more hurtful and harmful than it was when we were passing notes, when kids were passing notes when we were growing up. It goes out worldwide. Everybody sees it. Everybody sees it. It didn't just go from Utah or from me to you. It, it goes across the world. So everybody that has you as a friend can then repost it and repost it and repost it. And that's really sad. But I, I think it's critical that you mentioned parents need to check their yes. child's phones. You can get online, you can turn your child's phone off from 11 p.m. to a certain time of day. You you really need to monitor. And what bothers me is that password piece. Because yes. what if the ages when you're still at home and in school, you don't need, what are you hiding? That would be my first suspicion. What are you hiding? Or, you know, and what's coming in on your end that's embarrassing you? Absolutely. Absolutely. So we really, really, you know, in, in the beginning, um, when my children had thought it was a safety piece. Yes. You know, uh, us too. Call me when you need to ride home for practice. Yes. Or, you know, but there, a lot of the apps weren't out there then either. So now that it's growing and there's so much we don't know what our children are doing. So Absolutely. Monitor. It's your right. <laughs> it's, it's your job. Yes. It is your job. <clears throat> Absolutely. It is your job. That, <laughs> so, you know, and I wanted to hit cyberbullying right up front because it is the number one. It is, isn't it? Number one right now. Then we have verbal bullying, that saying or writing something hurtful or mean or, or whatever to, to an individual. That's teasing, name calling, inappropriate, inappropriate sexual con comments, taunting someone, uh, threatening to cause harm. We have that verbal bullying. Then we have emotional social bullying, involves hurting someone's reputation or mm -hmm. their relationships, uh, leaving someone out on purpose. I've heard preschool settings yes. where the children are saying, if you play with so-and-so, you can't be in our group. And it's like, and this isn't evident. This isn't, like, you can't see Absolutely. this type of bullying. And that's so scary from a perspective as an adult. When you're in a classroom or in, a, in your home raising your children, you can't see that going on. Absolutely. It's not like it's right there in front of you. And it's so prevalent in the younger ages now too. Absolutely, like that click and that yes. group and and yeah, the emotional, social emotional piece. It it certainly is. You know, you, <clears throat> telling kids not to be friends with other people, spreading those rumors, embarrassing someone in public. Now I know some parents will embarrass their kids in public, and they think that's discipline. No, that's not. That's being hurtful, harmful. That's emotional, social bullying, right out. And then, of course, we have physical bullying. That's when somebody's hurting someone, their body or their possess possessions, like hitting, kicking, you know, punching, pinching, uh, tripping someone, pushing someone, taking some something that belongs to someone and breaking it, uh, making rude or mean hand gestures or, or something of that nature. That physical bullying also, you know, before we... We saw, you can see that physical bullying sometimes. Sometimes mm -hmm. you can't because they'll push you into a locker when nobody's looking. That's why you need to have teachers in the hallways in between classes all the time. We had cameras oh, in our building. Oh my gosh, that's and even better. Pull the, you know, pull the camera, yes. pull the video, take a you know, snippet of what was happening in that hall during that transition Absolutely. time. Absolutely. 
and we have to also remember that you know their brains aren't fully developed our mm -hmm. kids brains uh, until the age 25 or later and it's that front part of the brain it's that executive part of the brain is the last the prefrontal cortex last to develop where we you know controls all our judgment sound decision making being empathetic understanding how somebody else is feeling considering consequences uh, regulating emotions self-awareness of themselves and morality knowing the difference between right or wrong and what's good or bad so if that part of the brain is not fully developed you can kind of see why kids don't get that they're blooming they don't understand that they don't see it as they being wrong. It. they don't see it so we have we as parents and guardians have to figure out what we can do to help our kids and we have to to, to share these things with their kids. So what can parents and guardians do? What can kids do, um, you know, to when they're the, being bullied or maybe they're the bully? Uh, we as adults need to remember that we're their role models. So they're watching us 24-7. Yeah. <laughs> so remember, mean kids grow up to be mean adults. If our kids see us being mean, they're gonna say, that's the way I'm supposed to act. We have to make sure that we apologize if we've made mistakes or we've hurt or harmed someone. We have to be mindful of our words, our actions, our, our posts, um, whatever we're doing. We have to have mutual respect, compassion, and love for everyone. We as adults, our kids are watching us. Yeah. You know, we have to, to, to be mindful of that. Well, we've mentioned many times in most of our videos, you, the home is the first TGS. Yes. That's where they're learning everything. And as you mentioned, I like, mean kids grow up to be mean adults Absolutely. and you can see that look at your own peers as an adult and and see how that was and then you can look back in their life and think hmm, now i know why they're like that absolutely and when they do come to you they come to us we have to listen they have to listen with our whole face yes not just our ears but our whole face and look at them and truly hear what they're saying if some if it's something they can handle we gotta let them handle it if but if it's something that we need to brainstorm with them some solutions or even intervene then we need to do that and we always have to make sure we follow up with them uh, we have to teach our kids how to problem solve you got let them know it's not your fault you're not to blame you didn't do anything wrong and you're not alone we're here to help you uh, you got to help them to learn how to cope with conflicts and make difficult um, decisions know the difference between telling and tattling yes telling yes. is you tell to protect someone someone is being hurt or harmed so you're telling if you're tattling you tattle or snitch to get somebody in trouble that's you know that's the first thing a lot of a lot of people a lot of kids will say I'm not gonna tell I don't want to tattle that's not telling it's not telling not saying anything can make it worse maybe for, for that your child or for everyone else. Uh, the kid who is being bullied thinks it's okay. The kid who is bullying thinks it's okay to bully then if we don't intervene. They think no one's stopping me, so I must be doing something okay. We have to be a friend, show kindness and, and support. Uh, tell our kids, be friends. In here in Tuscarawas County, my son-in-law just put 27 or 30 bully uh, buddy benches at every elementary school in Tuscarawas County. They're called buddy benches. So if you live in, in Tuscarawas County, you'll know that the Good Neighbor Project that my son-in-law, Andrew Wilstman, and my daughter, Kate Gallagher Wilstman, um, they did that. They had people who sponsored the benches, people who painted the benches, and then they, they installed them on the playgrounds of every elementary school in Tuscarawas County. Andrew talks to the kids about, this is a great place. If you're feeling lonely, you, you need a friend, you sit on that buddy bench. And then somebody will know that you need a buddy at that time, and they'll come over and talk with you and, and be your friend. Oh, that's phenomenal. Isn't that a cool idea? I thought, I thought it was a great it's idea. A yeah, it's a positive thing. Absolutely. And, and the child just doesn't have to feel, you know, like they're exposed in any way absolutely and they can nonchalantly go over there and sit that's great it's like a safe space yes on the plate on a yeah outside which i love uh speak up if if you if you feel safe then speak up if you're an outsider if you're the friend of somebody who's being bullied speak up don't hesitate to to intervene and tell the person that you don't like what they're saying or what they're doing uh make sure you don't laugh 
you know, we got to tell our kids, don't laugh, don't, don't be a part of the problem. Intervene if you're feeling safe. Tell an adult if it's getting out of hand, if it's something that can't, can't be stopped. Teacher, bus driver, counselor, parent, guardian. When I uh, was at Welty at, and at West Elementary here in New Philly, we had a, a program where the kids peer mediation. Mm -hmm. So when there were problems, other peers were the mediators and they talked it through and it was a terrific plan. I've not heard we have peer mediation anymore in our schools for the kids. It, it was wonderful. It was absolutely terrific. I think it nipped a lot of problems in the bud. Um, and we have to remember to tell our kids, not everybody's going to want to play with you. Sometimes, you know, it's just an off day. No one wants to play with you. Say, it's okay if you don't want to play with me today. I get it. Walk away and find something else to do. Don't take it personal. Maybe that other person's having a hard time. Yeah, and I think that's a skill we, we have to talk about yes. with our children, yes. whether we're in the teaching capacity or parenting capacity. We need to let them know what is okay yes. and, and that sometimes just that, you know, it's, Absolutely. it's okay to, but it's a strategy and it's skills we need to teach kids. Yes. We need to teach that. Absolutely. And I think they need to understand a little bit too why a child bullies. I, I mean, you may be the target, but it's just because that bully needs to make themselves feel better. Absolutely. To put somebody else down. They do. I always told kids somebody is feeling pretty low. Maybe they feel like they're, they need someone to feel lower than them at that time. So, you, you know, that's why I say we have two people in pain here. We have the victim and the, bully. and the bully we have to take care of. You know, sometimes parents, adults, people give, give the wrong, wrong advice, such as just get along. Well, that doesn't happen. We know even in the workplace, do you get along with your boss all the time? No. You can't just say that and let it go away. You can't say it's a part of growing up. Mm, mm -hmm. You know what? Yeah, it is a part of growing up, but also a part of growing up is learning how to get along. And be kind. Yes, and Just because it's part of it, it, it can still be hurtful and wrong. Absolutely. <laughs> I love when they say ignore them. They'll go away. Mm, nope. It gets worse, again, doesn't it? Again, do you ignore your boss and they go away? No. <laughs> it can't happen. You have to learn to, to, to deal with these things. Hit them back. No. Violence with violence is not the way to solve things. But you'll hear a lot of parents say, yes. well, I told them if they hit them, they yep. go ahead and hit them back. And, and uh, it's scary. It's exactly. There are some parents that do give their kids permission to, to go ahead and, and defend themselves if they're getting beat up. You know, you can role play some, some different um, scenarios too. Uh, there's a school psychologist, Izzy Coleman, who wrote a book, uh, Bullies, to, Bullies to Buddies, How to Turn Your Enemies into Your Friends. And, and he says, treat the person that is bullying you as a friend rather than an enemy. So if their name calling you and they're saying you're so fat, you're ugly, some, you know, right away we defend ourselves and say, I'm not fat, I'm not ugly. Best way to to reply perhaps a calmer response because we're always talking about being calm in our responses is you know you're so lucky that you're skinny oh and no one bullies you nobody makes fun of you but people make fun of fat people or you can say you know what i'm comfortable in my body but if you're not if you don't like my body that's okay that's your opinion and turn around and walk away role play these things with your kids if it, rumors i heard Cammy's cheating. You know, I heard that you cheated on the test. Right away, we, we reply, no, I didn't. I didn't, I didn't cheat. You're, they're lying. They're lying. Calmer response would be more of, really? Do you believe that I would cheat? Is this, are these tips in this book? Yes. These Those are, are tips excellent. in this book. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, and if, if they say, no, I don't believe that you would cheat, then say, good. Let's not spread that rumor. But if they say, yes, I believe that you cheated, say, okay, if you want to believe it, I can't stop you. That's for you to believe. And there's nothing more that, that I can do to change your mind. Because you can't. You can't change someone's mind if they're, if they're not going to believe you. If they're excluding you and you're not invited to a party, and, you know, your first response is that's so mean. I'm going to have my mom call and get me into that party. Uh, I don't want to. I don't want to come to your super party anyway. Yeah. A more calm response would be, if I'm not invited, I won't come. Obviously, I hope you have a great party. 
that's kind of not reverse psychology, but it's kind of like turning it around and take, you know, catching them off balance. Because they can't say anything back to that. They can't. There's nothing to say back to that. There's <laughs> absolutely nothing. You know, it's going to take a week or two, but they're going to find out they're not ruffling your feathers. They're not pushing your buttons. They love, you know, bullies love to push buttons. If they see you escalating, they're going to push that button. So please don't. And if it's hurtful, harmful to you or someone else in any way, ask an adult for help. You've got to make sure you have to ask an adult for help. Sometimes our kids are the bullies. So what are you doing when my kid's the bully? You get that dreaded phone call. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Got to acknowledge the behavior right off the bat. Sit down with them, talk to them in a calm yet firm way. Find out why they behave that way. Make sure they know we don't behave that way in our family. We treat people with respect. And we don't want you to treat other people disrespectfully. Emphasize, emphasize that. You have to emphasize that's not a part of our family. It's not a part of who we are. And we don't expect you to do that out in public. Fo focus on consequences. Discipline versus punishment. Make sure it's connected to misbehavior. Discipline, not punishment. Because punishment is hurting. And that's what bullying is, is hurting. Right. right. You don't want to do that. People say, oh, I'm going to take their cell phone away. Well, if they're texting these mean things, yes, or take that app off or, or, or something of that nature. Block it. Um, something and to put a positive spin on it that's connected to the misbehavior. Have them write a paragraph and flip the scenario. What if you were the one being bullied? How would you feel? How would that make you feel? Write an apology letter to the person that they bullied. Uh, or maybe get them together with the other parents and guardians and have a, a discussion. Um, I've heard siblings. I tried yes. that once. The yes. siblings, they were fighting, arguing, yes. being mean. And I'm like, sit on the couch and hold hands for five minutes. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. It works a little bit. <laughs> it does. But you got to have a talk as to why, why it was going on and solutions for it. And it's that feeling piece. I don't, I oh, worry yes. our children, they don't understand that basic golden rule about doing that to others. And yep. how would that make you feel? And I really hope that through these broadcasts and through readings or interactions with um, your schools or um, that families learn ways to help their child be kind. Absolutely. Absolutely. We need that so much. Much of our much of this is a result of not knowing what's kind and what's not kind. Absolutely. What's respectful. We've forgotten. We really have. We really have. You know, as, as a parent of the bully, you have to be proactive. So you need to talk to the school administrators, talk to the counselors, talk to the teachers, talk to the parents or guardians of that child who was the victim. Uh, put together a plan to help your child do better uh, as, and to stop that bullying. And also seek professional help if you can't get to the bottom of it yourself. It's out there. Yes. yes. There is help. We've got to build their social emotional skills, their coping skills, their self-awareness, their self-management. Um, help them to learn how to, to stay calm and controlled. If we fly off the handle easily, they're going to learn that's okay. So we have to teach them and be good role models in that respect. And it teaches them to problem solve. We, you know, goes back to all that. We've got to teach them how to problem solve and be a little creative. Absolutely. Think outside the box at times. Absolutely. Remember, <laughs> their brain's not fully developed, so we have to help them. We have to listen and guide them and, and be good role models. You know, there's a couple different websites you can go to. One is Stand Up Against Bullying, That's and it's headsup.scholastic.com. So just Google Stand Up Against Bullying and, and you'll find that one. And the other is a government website. It's Stop Bullying and it's stopbullying.gov mm -hmm. you can go to. And know that Ohio has anti-bullying laws and, and schools have anti-bullying policies. So make sure you know your rights and you check your school district's um, policies on bullying. And and that, you know, with the coming into closing with that, we'll try to get some of those websites listed on our Absolutely. Um, after our video and I want to point out the t-shirt um, as an educator we wore those though they were bought for us and we wore them once a week and we had curriculum and lessons that actually went with bullying for every grade level in the elementary and I, I would hope that some of those things that we were doing then help 
you know, those children carried over as they got into Absolutely. more of the high school age when they had the access to technology more. But um, yeah, I think it's so much to say. With and I know we've gone over today, <laughs> a lot way over the, our usual time, and I hope but that's we, okay. There's a lot of good information here, and I think it's so much of it's important. We probably could have done a part two. We probably could have <laughs> done a part two. But I think some so back to that creative. I I think we focus on our differences so much. We focus on differences, and um, with that, it creates a lot of negativity and a lot of bullying in yeah. the world in general. And if everybody focused on what we all have in common, absolutely. And you've hit this a couple times. We all have in common, which is we all want to be happy. Yep. It's it's simple. Simple. It is. Well, as you said, um, a lot of good things today. We'll put those websites down below. I want to thank Karen for being here with us today. If any of our viewers have questions or comments, feel free to add those. COAD is the child care and resource agency for 31 counties in Eastern Ohio. This broadcast is brought to you today by in partnership with the Ohio Children's Trust Fund and the Eastern Ohio Region, Regional Prevention Council. Their mission is to prevent child abuse and neglect through investing in strong communities, healthy families, and safe children. Our Eastern Region consists of the following 10 counties, Belmont, Carroll, Coshocton, Guernsey, Harrison, Jefferson, Monroe, Muskingum, Noble, and Tuscarawas. Thank you for joining us. Thank you again, Karen. You. And we look forward to meeting again. We'll do another Facebook Live on June 24th. We'll talk a little bit about self-esteem, which will tie into this topic of our bullying and how to help parents work with their children for self-esteem on Monday, June 24th. And that will be at 4 p.m. Thank you and have a great day.